If you ask an average person what the first ever portable MP3 player was, I'll bet most of them would answer something like the iPod. Those who know maybe a little more about computing history might answer something like the Diamond Rio PMP300, but both of those answers are actually wrong. The very first portable MP3 player was this, the MP Man, by a little known Korean company called Sehan Information Systems. I'm going to take a look at it right now. So this actually started out as a scripted video, but talking about MP3s for a long time really actually gets kind of long-winded and boring. So I'm going to do this unscripted, and I'm just going to go through what's in the box, uh, what this player is like, what the experience was like of uh, loading up your MP3s back in those days. Uh, it's kind of different than uh, what we have now. But uh, first, a little bit about Sehan Information Systems. They were actually uh, an offshoot of Samsung. They were a spin-off of Samsung. And there's a good reason why this little Korean spin-off was putting out the first MP3 player and not one of the big manufacturers like Sony, Toshiba, Panasonic. And I'll get into that in just a few minutes. But first, uh, just a little bit about MP3 itself. MP3 was, was adopted in 1992. That's when the first MP3... Uh, files started banging around on the internet. You could also rip your own. It was kind of considered sort of a, a nerdy thing to do. It didn't have a lot of mass market acceptance. Uh, I was one of the nerdy people who used to do it. I ripped my own CDs. I admit to downloading one or two files off sites like the Internet Underground Music Archive and later mp3.com. I did use Napster for a little while, which came around in the late 90s. But uh, there was really no way to play your MP3 files on the go. Um, you, it was basically your computer and that's it. So it wasn't really a stretch to think that people might want to do that. And you would think that one of the big players would come out with a... Well, one of the big manufacturers would come out with a player. But no, Sehan Information Systems again. Uh, this player was originally sold not in Korea, but actually in Japan. Uh, it showed up in 1998, the spring of 1998, and it quickly was licensed for America. You may have seen this in America, marketed by Iger Labs. They had two models, just as Sehan did in Japan, the F10 and F20. This is the F20, and I'll go through some of the differences there as well. But uh, First, let's just take a look at the box, because it's kind of an interesting box, especially for a Japanese release. Everything on the box is in English. So uh, we have the world's first MP3 player in a pocket, MP Man. Does your spirit good. Uh, over here on the side, we have the specifications, which most of which are actually still pretty good for today. Um, let's see, we've got, uh, well, some obviously aren't. 32 megabytes of flash memory. Yes, that's megabytes. This model, the F20, does have a smart media slot for expandability up to 64 megabytes. Yes, you can almost fit a full album of music onto this if you're using high bit rates. The F10, by contrast, did not have any expandability at all. Uh, we have a, a very small LCD display. The PC interface, yes it is, I don't know if you can see this, it is a parallel cable. We'll get into that in a little while also. Uh, the power is provided by a single AA battery. And I've zoomed in here a bit so you can see this a little better. Again, a single AA battery, which is kind of interesting. The F10 did have a nickel metal hydride battery, which was rechargeable. This, you just have to replace the battery whenever it dies. And uh, we have 20, the standard 20 to 20,000 hertz frequency response, distortion rate, uh, which is actually pretty good, signal to noise, 70 dB, that's not great, but, uh, you know, it bests a lot of turntables out there, so, and we have mega bass enable. So, that is the specs, let's take a look at the back of the box, and here we are zoomed back out, MP Man is a palm-sized portable MP3 player of new generation that allows you to carry MP3 files anywhere you go and enjoy the excellent quality sound with MPEG-1 Layer 3 technology. 
Yes, for those that don't know, MP3 is MPEG-1 layer 3. It is not actually MPEG-3. There was actually an MPEG-1 layer 1 and 2, uh, which would technically be called MP1 and MP2, but they're just not as efficient as MP3, so they were not really ever used. Minimum system specs, Windows 95, 98, 486 or higher microprocessor with 16 megs of, megs of RAM and 10 megs of hard disk space. I think we can handle that these days. Uh, what is MP Man? Now remember at that time, it, this was a new thing, so they did kind of need to explain what this thing is. Excellent quality sound, flash memory and smart media card, drag and drop interface, shock-free player, no skipping, compact, lightweight, and portable. Use for a language purpose. Now, this is kind of their backdoor way of saying you can do things other than play pirated music on this player because that was important in those days. The big reason why you didn't see players come out initially from big manufacturers were legal reasons. And especially because uh, companies like Sony, I believe Sony had already purchased uh, Columbia Records at that point, so Sony was in the record business, so they were not going to be putting out a player that they thought would encourage pirating music. Diamond, who later put out their Rio PMP 3000, they were sued by the record industry. Sehan was not. And why is that? Well, the answer is pretty obvious. They were in Korea and uh, marketing this initially in Japan. So anyway, continuing on here, MP3 Resor. Recommended sites are provided as follows to help you with other various MP3 files. So, they give you a list here of all the different places you could get MP3s. You had to get your MP3s somehow, I guess. Other side of the box is just a picture of the unit. And more pictures. So, let's get in here and see what you would have gotten in those days. This happens to be a complete inbox, almost like new MP Man. So... We'll see what the experience was like of opening your first ever portable MP3 player. Ah, so here we go. Nice cardboard box. Comes with a nice case with the MP Man logo, uh, I guess embroidered. It's actually embroidered onto the pouch, which is actually kind of nice. Remember that this thing in those days, uh, I will look up the exact price and uh, hopefully post it at the bottom of the video here, but it was around 500 and some dollars. So uh, it should have really come with some premium goods and it's a nice pouch. I have previously put the battery in here for storage. That's my own battery. This is the MP Man. Let's open this up. And that's it. I mean, it's quite small. And you guys can't tell this, but it's extremely light. Uh, it feels like the hollow piece of plastic that it probably is. It is not made of metal. It is plastic, but it's actually quite a bit lighter than the iPod that came later, um, even with the battery inside. And let's, let's just stick the battery in here. Uh, goes this way. And here's a little closer look at the unit, uh, the very tiny LCD screen. As far as I can tell, it is not backlit. I, I don't see any way of uh, making it backlit, but here you can cycle through the different functions. Uh, here we have mode, which this is this is something that was common in those days, but is a lot less common now. And that's this lets you go through your repeat and shuffle modes, um, which would have been a useful thing. A lot of CD players had that at the time, but. Uh, they don't you don't have a dedicated mode button on like a modern cell phone here on the side we have the a dc input if you actually wanted to just put this on a desk and listen to it while you're working you could get a, a dc input so it would just run all day this is 
This is kind of a scary slot to open. Ah, that's where your smart media card would have gone. Nothing in there right now. Other side, we have the hold button, which uh, actually holds switch, sorry, not hold button. Bottom here is the computer interface, which is covered by a rubber protector. And on the top, we have most of the controls. So oh, let's turn it right side up. So here we've got uh, skip backwards, play and stop, skip forwards, and your basic volume up and down along with the three and a half inch phone jack. Continuing on with the box because there is actually a lot more left in the box. We have the software that's actually never been opened and I will be opening that because this is not a plug and play device. So I'll be opening that for the first time and trying it out in this video. Parallel cable. I have one computer with a parallel interface, so I'll be breaking that out again, and uh, you'll be seeing my ThinkPad 600X that was featured in my most popular video. Headphones, which I have not tried and will not try. I do not know if they are used or not. So those will be staying in the package. The manual, which is entirely in Japanese. So I can read some of this, but not really enough to be useful. Uh, I don't read kanji. I, I do, I can read kana, but uh, no, this stuff, I, I assume it's telling you the different battery states, but no, I don't get it. Um, there's certain things you can learn from the pictures, obviously, and most of it's probably pretty self-explanatory. I assume you Connect the cable to the computer, stick the CD in, and uh, away you go. But uh, what actually happens after that, I have no idea. So I will be finding out at the same time as you are. It is a nice full-color manual, though. Uh, again, as it probably should be for a device that cost uh, over $500 at the time. And this is an instruction manual for the MP3 encode decode software manual, which this I assume is also on the CD. Let's see. Well, it just says MP man manager. So we'll see what this is, but my assumption is that this came with some MP3 ripping software for your own CDs. I'll try that out if it's actually on here. Again, all in Japanese, and this one's completely black and white. And warranty card, and actually this would serve as, uh, this would serve as the start of the warranty. Stores in Japan typically would stamp this. This was bought in July, July 25th of 1999, which is actually, this must have been sitting on the shelf for quite a while because what seemed to happen is that these were licensed in America by Iger Labs and then brought back into Japan by Iger Labs. So to have this original box, which is a Seihan box marketed, this one was marketed direct by Seihan, which means it's one of the originals, as far as I know, that would mean it would have to have been sitting on the shelf, or at least most likely sitting on the shelf alongside the Iger Labs versions in 1999. So kind of interesting. Anyway, let's, let's try and get this thing hooked up and get some MP3s transferred over to it. So here we go, trying to install the software. Oh, and there is an English version on the disc. 
we're not going to do the readme. Let's just go straight to setup. Sorry about the focus earlier. Here we are, hopefully focused now. And we're in the English setup here. That was fast. Let's see if anything was installed onto our start menu. Cannot find the MP man. Let's restart and see what happens. Uh, it's been a while actually since I connected anything via parallel port. It's possible I may have to do it while the computer's cold. So let me shut down, restart, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and it's actually quite a bit later right now. Uh, a lot of people in my earlier ThinkPad 600X video wondered why I didn't just completely reinstall a fresh copy of Windows and just nuke the old one. Well, here's why. I wanted to keep this ThinkPad configuration software and I needed it because I had to change my parallel port, port mode from uh, bi-directional to ECP. And uh, that's not possible in the BIOS. That's only possible here in the ThinkPad configuration tool. So that's done, and now the MPMAN software is recognizing the MPMAN. This file is one that actually came on the unit. I believe it was actually sold with this file on the device already. And it's a pretty cool uh, little promotional audio file. I'll play some, some of it for you right now. Just kind of neat to hear that uh, now in 2017, almost 19 years after this device was first released. So let's just try and drag and drop some files onto this device. I've actually got to prepare some and uh, I'll be back again in a little bit. So here I am now back with a CD full of MP3s and let's try this thing out. And here are my MP3 files. Apparently I can just drag these over so we'll see how that works. Oops. And there it goes. This was the experience. We're going about uh, one file every uh, 15 seconds or so, I'd say. And this is one of the shorter ones. Yeah, this one's, this is about maybe 30, 40 seconds for this one. This, this is a 10 megabyte file. So this is actually gonna use one third of the entire memory that's built into this thing. I'll cut back once it's finished with all four files. Okay, so that's finally finished. The whole process took about uh, three to four minutes just for those four files. Clearly this device was not really meant to carry your entire music library around with you, and obviously it didn't have the capacity to do that anyway. You were meant to kind of just keep dragging and dropping stuff on and off this thing as you got new music. At the time, most MP3 files were either 64 or 128 megabit per second files, which were not very good quality, but they were a lot smaller than modern files. I've tried to include kind of a mix here just to see how it handles different types of files. Uh, this first file, which is Elastica Connection, this is actually a 181 average megabit per second file. Uh, this Rush Middletown Dreams, this is a official MP3 file that I downloaded from Amazon. And uh, this is, I, I believe it's a 256K constant bit rate, comes out to 10 megabytes. This is uh, Scandal Freedom Fighters. This is a new MP3 file that I ripped from a CD in iTunes. And this is at a, a variable bit rate of, uh, I believe it's 200, I think it's 256K also that I'm using right now, but it is variable as opposed to the constant bit rate here. And this Def Leppard Rock of Ages, this is a, a much older MP3. I'm not even sure how I created this. Um, but this is a 128K file. This would have been one of the early MP3s. The date on it is 1995. So actually created earlier than this player even existed. So this player should be able to handle this one just fine. 
I'm going to just play a little snippets of each one of these for you so you can hear how they sound. YouTube's going to compress them a little more, so just keep that in mind. But uh, I can't play much of these, obviously, because the copyright police will come after me. But uh, just to hear how, you, how they should sound, I'm not really going to be able to, to bring you how they sound through the player. But I'll listen myself and I'll report back to you in just a minute. This is actually how you engage the extend, well, the bass boost, I guess. Uh, norm is no bass boost, which is actually quite tinny. Uh, mid is mid, and MA is maximum bass boost, which sounds muffled and overdone. Mid is actually the most pleasing to me. Now, just getting back to this MP3 Studio Unreal for a second, this might be not quite as successful as the other software install. Uh, this is the software to encode and decode, I assume, rip your own CDs and also use as a player on your computer. This is only available in the Japanese install, so uh, I don't have Japanese fonts or anything installed on this system, so we'll see how this goes. And there is your MP3 player that comes with the MP man. Okay, so here we are in the MP3 studio encoder, and we're going to try to encode a track. I figure since Freedom Fighters didn't play very well earlier, we'll just try and do that one again, and uh, hopefully get it into a format that the player likes. Um, there's some options here. MP3, Riff MP3, not sure what that is, and ACM. And surprisingly, you actually can go up to 320 kilobits per second here. Uh, let's just try to do 256. Um, it comes with an encoder that'll do 256, so it should be able to play it. So let's go ahead and add the track. I know it's track 18. It also does support the Grace Note database, so uh, you can get the track names on here automatically, although I don't have this computer connected to the internet right now. So we're just going to go ahead and start and hope that this works. And now we've got our WAV file, so I'm just going to start to encode. <laughs> the speed is laughable. So I've actually had to plug in, which is why my screen might look a little brighter to you, but uh, I saved this as a Riff MP3, which apparently has an extension of RMP. We'll see if the player plays it. The MP Man Manager software seems to recognize it. It's transferring right now, and let's just see what this sounds like. Okay, so as you probably could have predicted, I had to re-encode that as a regular MP3. Uh, I made the assumption that the player would just uh, automatically support anything that the software it actually came with would put out, but that apparently is not the case. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this regular MP3 over and hopefully that'll work. Okay, so let's just go ahead and give that a listen. It sounds pretty good to me, and uh, obviously no dropouts that time. I just needed to use the software that came with the player in order to encode it. It probably encoded it in CBR, which is a lot easier for these older players to handle than variable bit rates. It's not having to do quite as much computation. So, sounded great to me. And again, you know, for non-critical listening, for portable listening, it, it really sounded fine. Of course, I wouldn't want to use it today. It's got a tiny little capacity. It's extremely slow, uh, as most things were back then. And uh, 
You know, even at the time, I didn't really see the point in something like this. It just didn't hold enough music. What I had shortly after this was released was this. And I used this for several years, probably, probably actually until I bought this, which did finally have the capacity that I wanted. But this is an MP3 player and CD combo. It would play both regular CDs and burned CDs full of MP3s, and you could fit a lot of MP3s on a single CD. Obviously, uh, 680 megabytes is a lot bigger than the 32 megabytes that came with the MP Man. So this is what I used. The fact that this could exist, along with a lot of other players like it, was made possible by this device. The MP Man was the first, and it kind of blazed a trail. Diamond ended up getting sued by the record industry, but, you know, the floodgates had opened up. And this and other devices like it showed that there was a market for these things. And that's how Apple ended up getting into the game. And the rest is basically history. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the MP Man, the world's first portable MP3 player. As always, if you like this video, be sure to click that like button below and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time.